Member for Davenport. Thank you so much, Madam Chair. I'll be sharing my time with the Honourable Member for Surrey Centre. It's a true honour for me to stand in this House this evening to take part in this important discussion and debate that we're having on Ukraine, on Russia's unprovoked attack on Ukraine. I want to start by thanking my colleague from Etobicoke Centre and all other members of this House for making sure that we have the space and time to have this important discussion. At a time when Canada is going through so much, our ongoing fight against COVID, the unpredictability, the uncertainty, and so much change that's happening in the world today, despite all of this, this unprovoked attack on Ukraine is very much top of mind for Canadians, and it's most certainly top of mind for the residents of my riding of Davenport. I firmly stand in solidarity with the people of Ukraine and with its legitimate democratically elected government and parliament, not just because I'm a proud Ukrainian Canadian, but also because I too join all Canadians in condemning in the most unequivocal manner the unprovoked, the unjust and the illegal attack by Russia on Ukraine. Two images stand out for me. The first image is President Zelensky standing his ground, not leave, leaving Kiev and, and saying, I am staying. We're fighting for our freedom, our democracy, and our country. And the images of Ukrainians, not just the soldiers, but citizens, everyday citizens who've decided to stay and use whatever's at their disposal to fight the Russians. Molotov cocktails, taking up arms, whatever's at, this, uh, at their disposal. Their bravery is, is, is inspiring. The second image for me is this big country, Russia, a global military power, attacking a smaller nation, unprovoked, and the world is, has taken notice because all of a sudden we all feel threatened because we do not stop this illegal and unconscionable attack on Ukraine. Who is to stand up for us should this happen to us? This illegal invasion is against international law and against Article 2 of the UN Charter, which says that there's no nation that is less sovereign, less equal than any other nation, and that no nation has a right to violate the integrity of another nation. Canada's UN ambassador reminded us in a speech at the UN a few days ago that the Soviet Union was actually present at the drafting of the UN Charter after World War II, and they are now in breach of the rules that they helped craft, that they have promised to follow. They know what the Charter says. They have chosen to breach it. I am so proud of, of, of Canada stepping up to do its part. We've stepped up to do our part, not only working closely with our allies, uh, working in conjunction with them and taking action with, our, uh, with our, primarily our NATO allies, but we're also taking action independently and stepping up to do our own part. We are taking action in terms of economic support, in terms of providing defensive weapons, lethal and non-lethal weapons, supplies, sanctions. Um, on the immigration front, we are fast-tracking the applications for Ukrainian refugees. We're banning uh, crude oil imports from Russia, and the list goes on, and we will not stop until this attack on Ukraine stops. Yesterday, um, I've, I've attended, Madam uh, Speaker, thousands of rallies in my life, but one of the best ones I attended was yesterday. It was not only well organized, but it was beautiful. We can all say the words, we are Ukrainian, but yesterday I really felt it, and I really believe that the 30,000 people in the center of Toronto really felt it too. We had leaders from Jamaica stand up on stage and say, Jamaica is, is Ukrainian today. We had Hong Kong Chinese stand up and says, we are Ukrainian today. I saw members from the Portuguese and the Brazilian community there as well, and they were there to show, show their solidarity. Every single culture, nation we had here in Canada was standing up for Ukrainians yesterday. The event ended with the Ukrainian uh, Canadian Congress telling us to look up. There was a drone that was taking photos above us because they said that the photos were going to be sent back to Ukraine to show all Ukrainians how Canada was there supporting them, thinking of them, praying for them. And I hope they did see our photos and felt our love and support and our hope for a peaceful end soon because we want them to be victorious. And most of all, we want, them to, we want peace for the Ukrainians who are part of a world that has seen too much bloodshed for too many years. And I do hope that we find a way to get to a peaceful end. I hope with all my heart that there is a way for Putin to stand down. 
Um, our, UN, our Canadian UN ambassador indicated a few days ago that it's never too late to stop, to dialogue and to negotiate, that we are prepared to find a way to peace, to prosperity and progress for all peoples living in the region. I'm going to end by quoting Taras Shevchenko. We'll have to do that through um, questions and comments. I, I do apologize. Uh, questions and comments? The Honourable Member for uh, Brandon Sirs. Thank you, Madam Chair. I want to congratulate my colleague for her excellent speech, and I'll give her a couple of minutes to finish her speech. Uh, member. Yeah, for, member for Davenport. Oh, thank you, Madam. And I want to thank the Honourable Member for allowing me to do that. I want to end by quoting Taras Shevchenko. For those that don't know, he's a Ukrainian uh, Kobzar, or the Bard of Ukraine, and he talked a lot about Ukrainian independence. He said, love your dear Ukraine, adore her, Love her in fierce times, in the last dread hour of struggle. Feverly beseech God for her. Fight on, and you will prevail. God helps you in your fight. For fame and freedom march with you, and right is on your side. Thank you, Madam Speaker.